I would like to take this opportunity and introduce you to King Kong. The reason why this car has gotten this name is because of the monstrous engine underneath this hood. So before I spill all the beans and tell you guys the good stuff, let's talk a little bit more about this car. So this is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9. Originally, they come out with a 2-liter inline-four motor. The motor is called 4G63. And till date, is one of the strongest inline-four motors you can find. But I did an engine swap, I did the unspeakable, and somehow I managed to get a 6.2-liter V8 engine in the small body. Wait. 6.2 liter V8, is that, not, is that not enough? Should I add a turbo maybe? Or should I maybe add two turbos? That's right, it's running a 6.2 liter V8 twin turbo motor. And let me tell you, at top end, this car is not slowing down. So let's go to the tuning side and also the upgrade so I can show you guys what exactly I have done. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to upgrades and tuning, we're going to go to custom upgrades and we are going to start here at the engine conversion. So I'm going to show you guys everything I've done so far for in case you guys want to mimic me and just have everything exactly what I have. So here we're going to go to engine swaps, here is three engines to choose from. Your stock standard engine, which is the 2 liter, let me just press Y, the 2 liter 4G63 motor. Then we have got the 6.2 liter V8 and the 1.6 liter inline 4 turbo rally car. Well, sorry, engine. <laughs> but I've decided to go with the V8. Go big or go home. So for the drivetrain, I actually kept it at stock all-wheel drive. And then for the aspiration, I've decided to go for a twin turbo. Sorry guys, I'm just a huge turbo fan. Uh, no hate against the other two superchargers. Uh, I'm just loving my turbos. Turbo all day and night. So then for the engine upgrades, I literally went and installed all the strongest things. As you guys can see that I'm listing here. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but I don't want to give you guys too long of a video to watch. So here we go. Uh, so everything is at max. So one thing I did actually notice that these oil coolers, for some reason, they actually add up to a lot of weight. So there we go to one, two, nine, three. If we go over here, it's one, three, eleven. Uh, one, two, one, three, eleven. So that is how much. That is about eighteen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, about a yeah eighteen kilograms extra for the oil cooler. But I'm just hoping that. The additional kilowatts will make up for it but if you want to install it you can go ahead and decide it all the way for your own so then we're gonna move to our platform and handling we've got the biggest brakes in and I did exactly what I did with the Subaru year with the Evo I've decided to install rally springs oh gosh I'm going completely out so I've decided to go with rally springs it just feels to me like there's more softness uh, adjustments I can do compared to the race ones so this is personal preferences I just found that the rally is actually working a little bit better for me but we're gonna go out and then for the anti-roll bars we have installed both of them we did not install a roll cage because actually all they do is just add a lot of weight 44 kilograms so no no thank you we don't want weight so that is why we went with a full race weight uh, reduction. And this actually helped a lot. Let me show you guys quick. It helped with 231 kilograms. That is insane. So let's quickly continue. So for the drivetrain, I went to the best clutch. And for the transmission, I've decided to actually go with the race transmission. I'm actually thinking of going to the... Where is it? The sports transmission? I, I don't know why, but I, for now, I'm just going to stick with my race transmission. It feels really to me like this car doesn't like to shift early. It doesn't like to shift uh, like in short gears. It doesn't like long gears. And it doesn't like shifting at all. So it's a very, very difficult car to tune. Especially if I compare it to the Subaru I've tuned the previous episode. So over here, we've got our race driveline. And then for our differential, we also went with the race diff. So for the tires, as you guys can imagine, we went slicks. And over here, we went to the biggest, fattest tires on front and back. We chose the uh, mags according to mags that looks the best and weighs the least. So such as these, they, they weigh minus 10 kilograms, if I'm not mistaken. 
So anyway, for the wheel size, I didn't change anything. Uh, it might add weight. I'm not sure. I, I'm not one for having like these slim, uh, slim slicks or slim wheels or whatsoever. So then over here for our wheel width, uh, I push it out all the way. I just think like it looks better. It's personal preference once again. It's not that your wheel is actually bigger. It's like you're adding spacers to make it stick out a little bit further. So yes, let's head out. And then I just changed the body kit. I changed the rear bumper, the front bumper, and also the side skirt. And I did not change the hood. I like this hood that comes out of its stock standard. It just looks so darn aggressive. And it's just like the emblem to Mitsubishi Evos. So let's quickly head back to our tuning. So right over here, I've decided to keep my rear my rear tire pressure at, z uh, at once, or almost at zero. And then my front at 1.3. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, even if I take this front one up or down, it doesn't really change that much. I do know why, but I'll show you guys just a little bit later. I don't want to jump too much around. So for the gearing, here is my gearing. You guys can quickly take a screenshot or pause this video right here and quickly, uh, yeah, change your settings if you want to. So then we're gonna go to alignment. So this is a very weird alignment and I'll show you guys why I did it. So as you guys can see here, we've got uh, two plus two and minus six. I'll quickly put it back to zero and show you why I did it. It's actually something new I found out. I still want to try it with my Subaru and see how it's gonna work. So over here, our toes uh, is zero, zero and our angle is all the way to high. Our anti-roll bars is stiff, that's what we want to see. And here we change things a little bit differently like we are used to. So, what we want to do is because this engine weighs so darn much and most of the weight is like in the front, we want the weight to go back. So with the Subaru, we actually kept the front side soft and the back side stiffer. But with this big engine in the front, we want and we need that weight to get to the back. So by actually making the rear suspension softer, it can go down easier under acceleration to throw the engine, the let's call it the engine or the nose, a little bit up to get that weight to the back just to help us with some traction. And then obviously what we're going to do is we're going to keep our front as low as possible and we might as well keep this one also as low as possible. It's fine. It's not a big change. So for the damping, I've decided to actually make my front stiffer, which is going to add more grip to the back and then the rear, which is opposite. So for your rebound and bump, make sure they are technically the same, but opposite. So your front must be stiff and then your bump, your rear must be stiff. So then for the aero, I don't have any aerodynamics. For the brakes, this is all up to you. And for the differential, I've moved my acceleration to full. Uh, and then over here, I moved it to full. We don't have to worry about deacceleration too much. Reason being is because that's usually when you're going to take a corner, you let off the throttle, like how quickly it should start deaccelerating. So yeah, never mind that. So here is a big change. We went and actually put 70% of power to the rear wheels compared to 30 to the front. The reason is, is because we're taking all of that weight to the back. So we got to make sure we will be able to have a lot of power there to uh, encounter or whatever you want to call it to actually get the car going to have grip and have the power to make an amazing launch. So this is one of the reasons why the front one, you can actually turn the pressure up because the higher the pressure is, the more it helps you on the top end. And because you've got most of the power, well, the, yeah, most of the power going to the back wheels and the back weight, it will be better for you to have more grip at that stage. So what we're going to do is we are just going to say yes over here. We're going to quickly head all the way to the festival. So before I do any pulls and show you guys everything, there's one thing I've completely forgotten that I wanted to show you guys. So we're going to quickly go over here. And I want to show you that I saw something about this car. It's something I always look at because it gives you an indication of when to shift. We're just going to go here to the cone filter. So this yellow line over here is your power in kilowatt. And in the pink is your torque in newton meters. So what you want to do is you always want to find that sweet spot where whenever you shift, that it doesn't drop too far back. And it also always shows you when to shift. 
So as you guys can see, usually with these uh, motors, as soon as the kilowatt goes up, they intend to go down as well. But over here at almost red line, where it's gonna just go da 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 da, it's still at max. So this car, you actually wanna push as far as possible into the red line. And when you do shift, even if it bounces to four, five, six and a half, you're still there by max power. So this car wants to be in the high RPMs. Let's quickly go all the way back to our festival. So before we do any pulls, I want to show you quickly something. If we go over here, I want you to look at the camber. The camber in these areas over here. Left or right, it doesn't matter. So if I actually push down, I hold down on the e-brake and I'm going to launch. Do you see this top part over here? It's actually going to, I think it was a plus 7 or minus 7. Let's quickly have a look. I'm going to my launch. There we go. So it goes to a plus 7. Six. So that means as soon as we're actually pulling away, the nose is lifting up. And when it lifts up, it's resulting in positive camber from the wheel. So that's going to add addition to spinning. So that is one of the reasons why my front camber was plus 7. So let's quickly look at the back one. The back one goes to minus 1. That is insane. So let's quickly try that again. Minus one. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna quickly go and fix it and then we're gonna go to Alignment. So as you guys can remember it went to plus seven So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it half the way Let's say minus three and this one actually went to a minus uh, a Minus one. So we're gonna move this up to plus four Five. So obviously as the weight is going to the back, it's pressing on the rear axle and it's actually cambering your wheels inwards. We're going to leave it at that and we are going to do our pull. So I just want to let you guys know that this setup is actually made for drag events. So as soon as I do try to pull away over here, you might actually notice it's going to get grip, bog a little bit. So in this case, you actually want to go and make your first gear a little bit shorter. But before we do anything, let's quickly heat up the wheels. Come on. Get your revs up. There we go. Okay, and let's quickly get back into our line. That should be more than enough. Let's quickly see how fast I can go with the quarter mile. That was 248. I did actually limit the car out by accident. So, but anyway, that was still an amazing run. And as this car progresses, it's just going stronger and stronger. So let's quickly go and do a, what do you call it, a drag race of other cars. You just got to remember that you shift as late as possible. Do not rate limited. It's going to take a lot of time away. So just to show you guys quickly the difficulty over here. Uh, I like to keep it on manual just to push the RPMs further. And I, do, I, I prefer to actually keep the traction control off. So that if there is a little bit of wheel spin in the beginning, it doesn't pull power out. So that your car can actually just wheel spin a bit, get grip and go. Let's go and start the event. And what a beautiful finish. And as this car just progresses and continues, it's becoming unstoppable. It can reach really, really high speeds. So anyway, guys, there we go. That is the car for you. I do hope that this helped everyone out. If you guys did find it informative, educational, whatsoever, please make sure to drop a huge, massive like. If you have got any questions, do let me know in the comments below. And obviously, I just want to ask you guys, if you have found out anything differently you have done to give you better times, please do share with everyone. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you would love to support the channel, especially if you're new, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see a similar video, hit the icon on the left. If you want to see one of my most recent videos, hit the icon on the right. And then I'll see all of your legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.